We're in the Prado in Madrid, and we're looking at a great early Velasquez, the Triumph of Bacchus. The painting is unnervingly vivid, almost more than photographic. Bacchus, the god of wine, looks beautiful, and he's sort of bathed in light. That and young central figure. And he's sitting on a jug of wine. <laughs> yes, appropriately. And he's the god of wine. And, and he's, he's got grape leaves yeah, in, his in his hair. hair. And yeah. he's come down to earth to bring men wine, which relieves life's sufferings. And relieving it, it is. You know, <laughs> everyone's <laughs> having a really good time. There's a figure kneeling down, one of Bacchus's followers, who's having a crown placed on his head, and there's a feeling of revelry and partying and fun. Bacchus looks away, yes. but that other figure just to the right... With the hat. He feels like someone we've all seen in a bar somewhere. Exactly right. He's got this bowl of wine that he's about to bring to his lips, which I don't know about for you, but to me, I feel as if I can just feel the coolness of that liquid. Yes. It is so transparent. I can feel it sort of waft or The push. glistening the, surface. The glistening surface. I can feel it sort of edge side to side. Right. And I can see his anticipation, but he's looked up at us. And yeah. so it's not just the vividness of the contrast of light and shadow across his face, but it's the way in which he smiles directly at us so that we're there. We are right there, ready to partake. Yeah, I think that's what's so, sort of uncomfortable about it. I mean, he's a kind of seedy character. Yes, I mean, he, he is. I mean, he looks sort of like he's lived a hard life, and the, and the figures around him, too, a kind of leathery skin and clothing that looks very poor. And Especially so, in contrast to the god. When he looks out at us, it sort of implies that we're like him. I sort of become a rowdy reveler, you know, in a half-drunken state, sort of partying it up and not feeling life's pain anymore. There is a kind of guilt by association. I think that that's exactly right. We are drawn in. So it's interesting that we're drawn in not only because of the scale of the figures and the sense of proximity, right? But we're drawn in by a kind of almost moral equivalency. It, there is a kind of lovely freeze of the figures, right? They're all very much close to the foreground in a kind of very Baroque way and occupy all kind of the same plane across that foreground, taking up much of the space of the painting. So there's a real directness about the figures. They're very much in our space. But there's also a really interesting set of contrasts. You know, you have the, as you described, the very beautiful body and young and sort of perfect body uh, of Bacchus. You've then got the satyr just over his shoulder. Mm -hmm. And those two mythological figures, and perhaps the third crouching down in the foreground in the shadow, are so contrasted against the, the figures of our reality right. who are on the right. But one of the things that I think makes this painting feel so vivid and so engaging is the variation in sort of degrees of focus that Velasquez brings to the canvas. In other words, look at the background. It couldn't be sort of more unfinished. The figure in the foreground in the lower left that we mentioned uh, in shadow feels almost incomplete. And so that really draws our eye right into those center figures. Mm -hmm. you know. There is something very interesting about the contrast again you mentioned it before, between the directness of the man with the hat and the way in which Bacchus himself looks off to the side, so that our eye has to go to, to the man that we don't want to go to, in a sense. There's a kind of realism that Velasquez is bringing to a mythological subject and not intentionally not representing it in a kind of classical manner. And he gives us a few handles, actually quite literally. If you look at the jugs down at the bottom in the center, you know, there is a kind of vividness there. We feel as if we can literally sort of reach in and grab one of those and, and it'll be poured full of wine for us. But there are these sort of points of, of entrance and sort of these, these points of kind of physical reality yeah. that give us access to the mythological in a way that I don't think we were used to. It's very much like the way that Caravaggio would paint religious subjects in Italy and you know with that kind of immediacy and realism and physicality and the down-to-earthness of the figures and the way that everything is happening very close to us. So I think what we're seeing is a kind of Caravaggio inspired approach applied to a mythological subject. Mm -hmm.